And we're back now with two key players in their respective parties. Senator Lindsey Graham, he joins us from Hilton Head, and former Vermont Governor Howard Dean, he's in Culpeper, Virginia this morning. I want to uh, start with you, Senator Graham. Uh, you just heard David Axelrod. Uh, basically, what he's saying is uh, you can blame it on the Tea Party. Do you agree with that? <laughs> well, if we'd listened to the Tea Party, we'd have $4 trillion reductions in in debt over time and not been downgraded. Now the Tea Party has come to Washington talking about reducing spending. Thank God they're here. This is the first time we've ever raised the debt ceiling where we tried to actually reduce spending. That's a good thing, but we're woefully short. The agreement fell well, well short of what the rating agencies were looking at. The Tea Party hasn't uh, destroyed Washington. Washington was destroyed before the Tea Party got there. The hope is that the Tea Party and middle-of-the-road people can find common ground to turn this country around before we come Greece. I hope All we right. can. Uh, well, uh, Howard Dean, I want to ask you what your take on what uh, David Axelrod just said. Well, look, I, I think the standard and poor's downgrade is a good thing because I think it underlines the fact that you can't get out of this without raising revenues. Sixty percent of the deficit is due to the Bush tax cuts. That's CBO saying that, not me. You cannot get out of this without raising revenues. It is impossible. And the vast majority of the American people want us to raise revenues, particularly on all those gazillionaires the Republican tax cuts mostly be benefited. It so let's do the right thing. Let's everybody put something into the pot. Now, there's some things you can't put into the pot. If the if Medicare eligibility goes up to 67%, you're going to see people running against Democrats in, in primaries. You, you know, we're, we're not going to penalize old people. We're not going to penalize middle class people anymore. Uh, while we let all these billionaires get through with no, and corporations, $53 billion going to oil companies on our, our taxpayers' money. Why can't we uh, start fixing uh, that? Governor problem? Dean, is, let me ask you this. This is ridiculous is what's going on here. Uh, let me ask you this. Isn't uh, the president going to have to share some of the responsibility for this? I mean, as I heard David Axelrod this morning, the president's done everything he could do, and it's all the fault of the other guys. Isn't this a shared responsibility here? Well, here's the deal here. I mean, I, I happen to agree with David. I think this is a Tea Party problem. I think they're totally unreasonable and doctrinaire and not founded in reality. I think they've been smoking some of that tea, not just drinking it. Uh, but the fact of the matter is that the president's going to get the blame and the credit for what goes right, whether he deserves it or not. That's what presidents do. So, sure, is he going to get some of the blame for this? Yes. We, this is a serious thing. If you look at the Standard & Poor's report, three times they mentioned that our unwillingness to raise revenues was going to make it impossible for us to regain our credit rating. That's a pretty clear signal. The American people are there. The Democrats are there. A lot of reasonable Republicans are there, but they're terrified of these uh, right-wing splinter groups, the radical right, uh, because they're so powerful in the primaries. And so what about that, Senator Graham? Uh, uh, aren't aren't Republicans like going to have to share responsibility just just as the de the Democrats are going to have to as, as Governor Dean concedes? Well, you can't be fourteen trillion dollars in debt unless both parties are working together to get you there. And the Tea Party is a result of what's wrong in Washington. They didn't create all this mess. It was an energy uh, created by people seeing the country slipping away and wanting to do something about it. The Tea Party's for a balanced budget amendment of the Constitution, so am I. I don't have any faith that either party is ever going to change things until they're made to do so. We need a balanced budget amendment. The truth of the matter is, if the President Obama were being asked, if he were in the Southeastern Conference, he'd be fired as a coach. He would not have his contract renewed. Everything is worse. Unemployment is up by 18 percent. Gas prices are up by 93 percent. Everything, housing prices are down by 12 percent. He's had a chance. We're three years into this, and he's failing, and it's not the Tea Party's fault. What was hope and change is despair and confusion. People are not creating jobs in this country because they think Howard Dean's going to raise their taxes. If you want to create jobs, don't raise anybody taxes. Try to lower spending like the Tea Party and other people up here want. So the Tea Party's not the problem. Washington was broken before they got here. I hope they can help us fix it. Governor Dean, do you think the president's in trouble uh, politically? Uh, is it now an uphill fight for him to be reelected? I don't think so. And the reason is there's a choice here in this election. The choice is between President Obama and the people that got us into this mess in the first place. The fact is that these deficits were created uh, by George Bush's ridiculous tax policies, which some Democrats voted for, I have to say. So I do believe everybody has responsibility for this. We got into this together. We need to get out of this together. And that means everybody has to sacrifice. And I do, I'd like Lindsey Graham, and I think he's a positive force in the United States Senate and a reasonable person, but I could not disagree with him more 
on this issue of the Tea Party's contribution. The fact of the matter is, and the American people believe this by an overwhelming margin, is everybody <coughs> has to put something into the pot here to get us out of this. And that includes all those wealthy bankers and corporations that the Republican tax breaks went to uh, 10 years ago. We got to all put something into the pot. It is unfair and unreasonable to ask middle class people and seniors on Medicare to take a big hit when bankers and oil companies continue to take our taxpayers' money. That is not right, it's not fair, and I don't care how vociferous the Tea Party is, that's not a winning strategy for elections or for the country. Well, let me ask you this, Governor Dean. There's no question that the uh, president has moved more to the center in an effort to uh, uh, resolve this and find compromise. Uh, did he make a mistake doing that? I mean, if you were president right now, what would be your tact? from here on to try to get some of the there things some, that Axelrod says need to Every, get done. Everybody has to have bottom lines. Do Can we limit the outlay on Social Security? Yes. But can we take away people's benefits? I don't think so. Can we eliminate, lim, limit the outflow out, uh, on Medicare? Yes, by using a payment system that encourages wellness, not sicknesses. But you cannot eliminate people from Medicare. You cannot raise the age of Medicare to 67 percent. That's unfair and outrageous. People wait to get on Medicare because their private insurance is so, so lousy when they're under 65. So you've got to pick and choose what you can do. We can compromise with reasonable Republicans about restricting entitlements. But we are not interested in compromising unless everybody bears their share, and that includes the wealthiest people in America, who, by the way, led us into this mess with the outrageous behavior of the, of the major banks. Uh, Senator Graham, are Republicans interested in resolving this, or would it be better politically if it didn't get resolved for Republicans? Well, it's one thing to talk on TV. It's another thing to produce a budget. Paul Ryan produced a budget. People don't like parts of it, but he had the courage to do it. I respect that. Democratic-controlled Senate's never produced a budget in 830 days. The President of the United States produced a budget. It got zero votes in the United States Senate. The President's biggest problem is he's not leading. He's a casual observer at a time when he needs to be fully engaged. Speaker Boehner tried to do a $4 trillion deal. They had $800 billion of revenue on the table. Speaker Boehner put revenue on the table. When he went back to close the deal, it was now $1.2 trillion they needed. So at the end of the day, this joint committee should look at what President Obama and Speaker Boehner tried to do to cut $4 trillion in deficits and get their ideas and try to see if we can find a bipartisan way forward. But Obama health care wasn't passed by the Tea Party. The stimulus package wasn't passed by the, by the Tea Party. The Tea Party didn't increase the deficit by 35 percent. The Tea Party is not the problem here. This president has failed to lead in any other private sector enterprise. He would be fired. If he was asking to be re up to run a football team, they wouldn't hire him. If he was trying to be a CEO for for a second contract, he wouldn't, be he wouldn't be hired. We've got a chance to win as Republicans, but Howard Dean's right. We've got to be for things. I'm for a balanced budget amendment that required both parties to do what we should have done a long time ago. I am for adjusting entitlements. I am for closing uh, uh, loopholes and deductions, bringing the money back into the Treasury, paying down debt. I'm not for raising taxes at a time when we got 9.2 percent unemployment. So this president hasn't led, and it, the tail of the tape is in. Statistically, this has been a lousy yeah. presidency, only getting worse. I, I actually right. have a, I have a question for Senator Graham. Where are you on Paul Ryan's Medicare plan? Do you want to privatize Medicare like Paul Ryan does? Medi Medicare would be saved under Paul Ryan's plan, but if you got a better idea, put it down Medicare in your budget. Medicare would be destroyed. Under, Medicare wouldn't me. exist under Paul Ryan's plan. Put together, plan. Uh, hey Howard, have your party lead. Put together a budget for the Senate. Have the Senate Democrats put together a budget and show us what they would we do. We do with that, Medicare. but you all have filibuster the, the do budget. A budget we so he can get at least one. Uh, one vote. You haven't put your own budget if, if, together. If this, You're sitting this was, on the sidelines you blaming Obama others. Be fired. The, the truth of the matter, Howard, the reason this administration is failing I'm is very sorry. Just when it's getting good, just when it's getting good here, <laughs> uh, we have to uh, say yeah. the clock ran out. Thanks to both of you for being with okay. us this morning. Thank Back you, with a final thought. Tonight.